in the house of the Lord tonight. I'm glad every one of you are here. Um, I'm assuming that the heavy rains and other nonsense like that has kept folks away. Um, I wanted to let everybody know I did get a text message from that was the gal that was pregnant um, Friday. She miscarried today. Um, the battles are raging. The battles are raging. And I just, I want to get mad at the enemy, but I don't know that that does any good. And as I was praying about this, because I get so frustrated, because I know that the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. But I feel like if I'm praying against him, I'm not praying to God. Like, you know what I mean? I don't know if that makes any sense. So I was, as I was praying, I mean, all my Facebook friends have been, everybody seems to be posting that there's just something very bizarre going on. There's more people in the hospital. There's more bad news. There's more diagnosis. There's more disasters. There's a, a couple that I know from high school that um, the, their son broke his leg, and then the mother's cancer came back, and then the father, who's trying to hold it all together, fell off of a ladder at work and is suffering severe brain injury and can't walk or have memory or... This is one family, and they're Christians. And I'm like, Lord, what is going on? This is ridiculous. And I was reminded of someone else in the Bible who kept seeking the Lord. And Paul kept saying, and I don't, I don't know what it was. I don't know what his thorn was. I don't know. Some say he was blinded. Some say this or that or the other. But it doesn't really matter because it's one of those things. It's those storms. It's those thorns in the flesh. It's the things in this world that don't make any sense. God doesn't promise us answers. God promises us victory. And I feel like God is saying the same thing to us today that he said to Paul. And it's in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. For this thing, well, 8 and 9. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me three times. And I imagine for Paul, who is a man of strong faith to pray about anything three times was unusual for him that seems like it's a big deal then which is why he is why it's written down right three times the man of god the person that everybody goes to basically the leader of the church at that time the person establishing the gentile nations fulfilling prophecy expanding the church the most powerful spiritual leader of that time besought the lord three times and God said, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon us. And I've always, I've always associated my grace is sufficient with the sufferings, right? And that somehow... It's our weaknesses that glorify God. I don't think that's what he's saying. And as I was praying about this and I was looking at the original Greek, there were a couple things that struck me. Um, the word grace, I'm using my blue letter Bible there to get in the original, that which affords joy, pleasure, delight, sweetness, charm, loveliness, grace's speech, goodwill, loving kindness, favor of a merciful kindness by which God uh, makes himself known what is due to grace, the spiritual condition of one governed by the power of divine grace, the token or proof of grace, the benefit, the gift, the bounty of grace. His goodness is sufficient, right? Well, sufficient to me has always meant is sufficient. And I've always thought about this as, as enough, right? It's enough to get you by. Well, it's not just enough to get you by. And what I was struck by when I looked at this is it's not sufficient. Sufficient is not the word that's defined. It is sufficient. It's a verb. This is a verb. This is an action. Our God's grace is an action. It is sufficient to be possessed of unfailing strength. That's a little bit more than just enough to get by. 
to be strong, to suffice, to be enough, to defend, to ward off, to be satisfied, and to be content. That's a little bit more than, oh, the martyr, kind of the martyr spirit. Oh, woe is me, but God's grace is sufficient. Throw up your hands and give up, and woe is me, and want to tell me all about the three things, the, 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 something, the thorn in my flesh. Let's talk about the thorn in my flesh, woe is me. It's more than that. And the Strong's definition of this Greek word that I'm not going to even try to pronounce is apparently a primary verb, probably akin to G142, which, which is the idea of raising a barrier. This is the idea of raising a barrier properly to ward off, to avail, figuratively be satisfactory, and to be sufficient. So it's so much more than just... God's goodness is, is enough. It's more than that. And then when I got really excited is when I, <laughs> I know I'm not excited yet. <laughs> I got really excited when I started looking at his strength is made perfect. Well, I've always thought of, you know, the, this, is, this is the finished work. This is the finished work of God. This is not you know, the, the get you by, this is the power, the dunamis, the strength, the word strength, my strength, my dunamis, God's dunamis power, the power of God Almighty, the power of creation, the power of resurrection, the power of God is made perfect, is brought to full effect when we're not in our weakness, but in our humanity. It's our humanity. And what, what I realized is it's not when woe is me and I throw my hands and I finally trust God, it's when we trust God. Yeah. It shouldn't be when we get to the end of our rope. It shouldn't be when, you know, the, the diagnosis has come and the, the bank statement has come and, and the, you know, the house is empty because everybody left and no one will answer the phone. I mean, it shouldn't be at those moments. It is, it is a state of sufficiency. God is sufficient. And when we will trust in him, it's that barrier, right? It's that strong tower. It's, it's the, the Psalm 91, he who dwelleth in the secret place. This is the secret place. That's what he's describing to me, is that secret place under the shadow of the Almighty, under his wing. And when we will let go and stop raging at the storm and simply focus, and I wrote down, I didn't even say this, all we need to know, I don't, I don't need to know how bad it is. I don't need to know how sad it is. I don't need to feel bad. I need to know one thing. And the one thing I need to know is God's grace is sufficient. God's grace is sufficient. And not, and not, like I said, not just enough to get us by, but it is the power of God. It is the very power of God. And when I say the end of me, the beginning of you, right? right. This blindness or whatever it was that infirmed Paul forced him to rely on God in a way he would never have relied on God. And because he was used so mightily, whatever, I don't think it was intentional, but it, it wasn't going to stop him. It was only going to show the perfection of God. If we allow these circumstances to show the perfection of God's finished work, then they are used for good. Then there is nothing to, you know, pray against or pray to. We just need to simply rest it's resting in that finished work it's just another way of saying rest in his finished work it is finished and you know we we get those phone calls pastor i know you get them a whole lot more than the rest of us do but man it gets discouraging but it's not the storms it's our god yes. he is our comfort and it's his presence that reminds us that the one thing we know is the most important thing and it's him yes. his grace when, I, I, I don't want to have to go through the storms. I don't want to have to have the thorn to fully trust and rely on him. But they come and they happen. And as, you know, as studied human beings, we want answers, right? Well, why did God let this happen? Why does this happen? Why does this? We will never know why. But we know who. And that's the answer. The answer isn't why. The answer is who. And I, you know, I go back to, we keep asking the wrong questions, right? People want to, I mean, we want to understand. If we trust that God is good and just let it go, it is good. Amen. It is well, right? It is well with my soul. I sing that song a lot. It is well. 
And these things cannot shake us. We cannot allow these things to shake us. And it always, you know, is discouraging when, you know, <laughs> I'm all worked up and we come here tonight and there's nobody, you know, there aren't very many people here. And it's like the enemy will not win. God, you know, you know what people need, you know the encouragement they need. So I just pray that all of us are vessels of salt and light yes. and that we remind everybody that God's grace is sufficient. It is more than enough. It is a state of protection. It is a state of abundance. We can have abundance in the midst of the storm. We have to trust God, and we have to take and receive what he gives us and thank him for it. It's so hard to say thank you and have a grateful, thankful heart when things are going, <laughs> going to pot all around you. But if we could just remember the one thing, God loves you. He gave himself for you, and he is good, and it is finished. These battles are finished. We are the ones that keep them, give them the power. Right, We're the ones that give those battles the power over us. And I, for one, am refusing to give the enemy any credit. I am refusing to focus on his evil deeds. And I am only going to glorify God, thank God for the blessings, and thank him for the victories, the testimonies that are going to come from every one of these situations. In Jesus' name. I don't know if that came out right. It did stutter it and stammer to get it out but Whew. oh well praise the lord yeah i was gonna say um i've been doing staff reviews all day long in a conference room so you know the key to any good relationship is communication <laughs> two way right so does so anybody else have any prayer requests tonight yeah we'll go. Uh, just
if they gave her that nerve medicine, but be careful. That's some serious no, they, they gave her steroid shots okay, and the steroid and the rest of it. Okay. Occasionally she is able to take it. Yeah, so that's good. Nerve medicine is bad news. Yeah. <laughs> good. Okay. Thank you. Well, you do it. Right, anybody else have any prayer requests tonight? James, if there's something. Pray for me today. standing by the water tonight. Heavenly Father, we just turn together, Lord, in one mind and one accord, Lord. We come before you tonight, Lord, we lift up these things, Lord. We thank you that your grace is sufficient. We thank you that your grace is more than enough, Lord, that it is. It 
just simply is. Lord, for every broken heart, Lord, for every hurting soul, Lord, for every hurting heart, Lord, for every hurting body, Lord Jesus, you know that healing, healing, Lord. Jesus, I thank you that it was finished, Lord, that you have finished it, Lord. That if we will trust in you, Lord, and call upon your name, Lord, that we trust in you, Lord, that we will dwell in the secret place of the Most High, Lord. That we rest in your finished work, Lord. That we labor not, Lord, but we trust in you, Lord. That your grace, your strength, your power, Lord, your dunamis power, the power of the Godhead that dwells within us will have its perfect way, Lord. It will be perfected. When we trust in you, Lord, when we speak your truth, when we stand upon your word, when we will not be silent, when we will not give up, when we will not stop trusting you. Lord, that it's your faith. It's your faith that we receive, Lord. By the hearing of your word, through our worship, Lord, we come together to lift you up. We turn our eyes to you, Lord, that we will gaze upon you in the beauty of your holiness. Lord, we will not look to the left or to the right. We will not be distracted, Lord. Though the storms rage all around, we trust in you and we move forward in you, Lord. That you lead us and guide us by your spirit one step at a time, Lord. You only ask us to trust you for that next step, Lord. Day after day, moment after moment, Lord, we look to you to lead us and guide us by your spirit, Lord. That your word be a light unto our feet, Lord. Jesus. And your grace is sufficient for every need, Lord, for every need in this body. That you be with those who cannot be here tonight, Lord. That you go to the north and to the south, to the east and to the west, Lord. And you minister, you send your ministering spirits, your ministering angels, Lord, to those who could not be here tonight, Lord. Those who are crying out for you, Lord. Those who are hurting, those who need to know that your grace is sufficient. Lord, we say, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. We lift up your name tonight, Jesus, the name above all names. For we say that you are worthy to be praised, Lord. You are worthy to be praised and you are good, God. You are good. We thank you for those here tonight, Lord, that you bless those here tonight. Let us renew our minds by the hearing of your word. Let us be encouraged and refreshed by the worship tonight, Lord. And let us be forever changed, Lord, as you reveal yourself in this special way that you do. This house is a house of prayer. This house is a house where you are free to come have your way, Lord. Have your way with us tonight. We come hungering and thirsting for more of you. Just as the rain has filled the lands around us, we want your presence to come and fill this house. Fill this house to overflowing that it may flow out to the highways and the byways all around us. Let our cups overflow tonight, Lord. In your name, for your glory. In Jesus' name. Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? I am a believer, and these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons, I speak in new tongues, I lay hands on the sick, and they do recover. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease, germ, and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ and every tissue of this body functions to the perfection to which God created to function. And I forbid any malfunction in this body in the name of Jesus. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of my understanding being enlightened, and 
And I am not conformed to this world, but am transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind is renewed by the word of God. The Lord rebukes the devourer for my sake, and no weapon that is formed against my finances will prosper. All obstacles and hindrances to my financial prosperity are now dissolved. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants, and Abraham's blessings are mine. John, would you like to come take the offering tonight, please? trials of various kinds. I've always thought ever since reading that verse that we should be happy that we're going through those difficult times because that means that we're close to God. And the closer we are to Him, the more we're going to be attacked. But like we just said, no weapon that is formed against me is going to prosper. So let's just declare now that he's good. Let's just scream it, yell it. Let's dance. So just join me. Scream it out from every mountain. 
dancing. How about you?
for bringing us together for unity of the spirit lord we stand here agreeing with your word we know that your promises are going to come to pass in our lives what you're releasing in this place is going to explore and it's going to expand in this region this neighborhood this state this country all over the world father thank you lord thank you lord. Thank, thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Woo. We celebrate your faithfulness lord you have never let us down you are good you are kind you're merciful Ah, oh, thank you, Father. Thank you.
God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's just thank Him right now. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. Thank you, Lord, for answering prayer. Lord, you are the answer to prayer. Hallelujah. We thank you tonight, Lord, for every blessing. We thank you, Lord, for the victory in every situation and over every circumstance. We declare that victory now in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Everybody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team. Good job, as always. Praise the Lord. Thank you, James, for your prayer. Appreciate it. God knows your heart. That's the good thing. Praise the Lord. Well, Suzanne has uh, pretty well summarized my message, so I'll be brief. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's get right into it. And uh, hopefully give everybody a chance to get out of here and get home at a reasonable time tonight. Praise the Lord. And obviously you won't have too much problems getting out of the parking lot tonight. We (laughs) shouldn't be any congestion out there. So praise the Lord for small blessings. Praise God. All right, let's, let's go right to this. Uh, Revelation chapter 21, verse 5. Revelation 21, verse 5. Praise the Lord. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Amen. All right, and 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to ask you a question tonight. Uh, it may just be a rhetorical question because I know... This isn't true of any of you, but just in case someone's watching live stream, praise the Lord. Actually, I, uh, I tell Roberto Sunday, you know, you, what you find out is that uh, you never get a pass when it comes to preaching. Uh, if you haven't experienced it before you preach it, get ready, because you will, praise the Lord. So I try to keep mine as much as possible to what I have experienced and uh, unless it's something really good, amen, I'll just deal with it that way. But the question is, does your faith ever feel like an old leash rather than a new lease on life? Does it feel like God says no to you more than yes? Are you focused more on what to avoid rather than what to embrace. If something feels good, do you secretly sense it must be wrong because you enjoy it too much or you like it or just because it's good, God must be against it? Now, you may think this is just idiotic uh, questioning, but I'm telling you, there is a huge segment of Christianity that lives their entire lives this way. Amen? We have many times we reduce faith down to duty and responsibility more than joy and love. And if we do that, we risk becoming one of those grumpy, angry, negative Christians that are always judging somebody else to make themselves feel better about themselves. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. Praise the Lord. All, 
just think about this. Every one of God's promises, all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a big yes, with a big amen. Amen? amen. amen. There's nothing left undone. Whatever the promise is, it's already been accomplished in Christ. Amen? amen. With a big amen on the end of it. Amen? amen? Not some of them, not a few of them, but all of God's promises. Praise the Lord. And we have Christ in us, amen, that hope of glory, the glory, amen, of God by us. Praise the Lord. He is, he's our salvation. He's our hope. Amen. He's our expectation. And through him, everything that God needed to be fulfilled in terms of the requirements of the law, he gave. He did it. He accomplished it. Amen. Amen. And he gave us a new identity and an inheritance. A new identity and a new inheritance that will never fade away, that will never diminish. Amen? You're not dimming out. I mean, you're getting brighter. You're, you're becoming more like Jesus, whether you are aware of it or not. God is doing this thing all the time. Praise the Lord. It's happening. Amen? And it will not diminish. It will not fade away. Amen? In, in Jesus, God shows us that he is pro-love, that he is pro-forgiveness, that he is pro-life, pro-purpose, pro-enjoyment in the fullest and richest sense imaginable. God is not against us having a good time. God is not against us enjoying life. God is not against... He's all for it. That's what He came to give us. God has declared a massive yes over your life in Jesus. Amen. God has, had, has said yes to you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Psalms 44, verse 23. And if, as Suzanne was saying, if we ever are, are totally confident of this, our trust level will, will be astronomical. And when we do go through things, because we do live in a world that's full of junk. I mean, it's a fallen world, so there's stuff happening. And, but when we go through them, if we have this confidence in God, if we really understand God's love for us and His yes or His amen to us, then when we go through it, we know this isn't coming from God, and God's going to be with me, and He's going to get me through it. And actually, I'm going to come out blessed on the other side of this thing. Praise the Lord. So awake. Why sleepest thou, O Lord? Arise, cast us not off forever. Ever felt like that? Wake up, Lord. This crap is getting deep. You know, help me out here. Throw me a bone. But He's not sleeping. God, God is not asleep. He isn't ignoring us. He wants us to enjoy life. He wants us to experience life. But he wants us to enjoy it and experience it in his yes. Amen. In a positive way. In a way that says, hey, if it feels good, do it. God must be for it, you know. You know what I'm saying. Don't be crazy, but you know what I mean. God has given us these things and life. To enjoy. He wants us to enjoy life. He doesn't want us to be grim and depressed and, you know, just always on the verge of being upset or fearful or angry or what have you. Amen? Amen. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 14. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is your wake-up call. Amen. Right here, right now. Let's believe that God has just shook us and said, Hey, I love you. I'm saying yes to your life. I'm giving you an amen, amen, to whatever you set your hand to. Whatever it is you have a desire for, whatever you're dreaming for, God is saying, Wake up! I'm for it. I'm with you. Amen. Yes. Go for it. Hallelujah. Amen. Genesis 131. God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Everything he made, he said it was good. Now, if you look at the Bible from the perspective of Jesus, from the reality of Jesus, what you find is that there is... Uh, 
things like laughter, joy, people, money, food, all of those things are created by God to give pleasure. He says they're very good. Amen? Very good. And even though we live in a fallen world, we still experience this good creation, this new kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12. All things are lawful to me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. So Paul said it himself. He said, there's nothing illegal for us because there's no law. But I'm not going to put myself in a position where I become controlled by something or manipulated by it, right? So it's all okay. It's all okay. Just don't let it control you, right? Right? You trust the Lord, amen, in all things. Praise the Lord. So it's about, it's about celebrating the freedom that God brings to us in Christ. He wants us to be free. He wants us to not be looking over our shoulder all the time. Wearing, wow, what about this? What about that? No, just relax. Experience your life. Enjoy it. Even, the, even negative things can be good experiences. Praise the Lord. Psalms 34 and 8. As Suzanne said, when we're dealing with those things, grace, God becomes more real. His grace is sufficient. It is actively doing something in our life. Amen. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Praise the Lord. How do you taste and see that the Lord is good? By trusting him. There's no other way to do it. Praise the Lord. So when you live God's uh, reality, when you live God conscious, when you trust God, you're going to experience an ongoing pleasure, an ongoing favor, even though there's ups and downs in life. You understand what I'm saying? Right. If you live God conscious, if you live in a way that you are trusting God, even though life has its ups and downs, there are issues in the fallen world that we live in, you can still experience joy. You can still experience the blessings of God in spite of it. Look at this in Psalms uh, 16, verse 11. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Trust the Lord, right? Stay God conscious. And you'll live in His presence. And in His presence, there is always joy. Even when you're going through junk. If you stay focused on the Lord, you stay trusting in the Lord, grace continues to flow. And you'll find pleasure. Because you'll find His presence. And where his presence is, there's fullness of joy. There's pleasure forevermore. Amen? Yes. We were made for this joy. That new creature that we read about in 2 Corinthians was created to experience joy, to experience a life of joy. And the more aware of God's presence we are, the more we trust him, the more you experience his pleasure. Praise the Lord. Now, let's look at this again, Psalm 1611. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. So God isn't the roadblock, but the pathway yes. to lasting pleasure, yes. to fullness of joy. Amen? Amen? See, it's about being present in the present season. You know, we talked about, I think Suzanne, Roberto, both, talked about being in the now, uh, not so much tonight, but in, in the past, because that's where God is. But think about our lives. I, I've been kind of thinking about that. In fact, Sally and I had a conversation the other night that kind of triggered some of this. But 
It's about being in the present, about being in this season that you are in. Your season may not be my season, but it's still the same present. Right? I mean, what you're going through isn't maybe what I'm going through, but this, it's still the now. Amen? It's still the present, right? So it's one day, you know, you look in the mirror and you've got this dark hair, wavy, thick. And the next day it's like you wake up and look in the mirror and it's gray, thinning, or just basically left, you know? Seasons change, and when you're in junior high or middle school, you're, you're wanting to be in high school. Your focus is get to high school. When you get to high school, you're thinking about college. You get to college, you just want a job. You're sick of school. You, you just want to get a good job. You get the job, then you wish you were older because nobody respects you because you're too young. They don't take you serious, right? And then you get older, and you wake up to gray hair. And now you wish you were younger. Right? I mean, everything kind of works this way in, in, in different ways, but we're always wanting to skip time. We're always wanting to rewind time. But rarely do we fully live in the season that we're in right now. Think about your entire life. We spend as much time thinking about what can be in the future or what was in the past instead of living in the now, in the moment. Psalms 104, verses 19 through 24. And there's reasons for it, because we don't like the now. Because of something about the now, we think the next is going to be better. <laughs> he appointed the moon for seasons. The sun knoweth his going down. Thou makest darkness, and it is night wherein all the beasts of the forest do creep forth. The young lions roar after their prey and seek their meat from God. The sun arises, they gather themselves together and lay them down in their ten dens. Man goeth forth unto his work and to his labor until the evening. O Lord, how manifold are thy works! In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. So God has handcrafted the seasons. God literally rules over the rhythms of life. Even though he's not the author of all the problems, he still rules, as Suzanne was saying, grace. Even in our weakness, even in our infirmities, his grace is still working. It's still sufficient. So he's still in charge. He still rules over all of the rhythms of life, the good times, the bad times, the, the, the great expectations and the great disappointments and, and all that come with life. But we, as humans, usually fight against this movement, against these rhythms. We deny it. We run from them. We try to squeeze more out of them. We seek to beat it. Amen? We try to reverse the effects of time, including gray hair, although it is what it is, so I don't put anything on mine other than a little oil from time to time. <laughs> 10 W 30. But think about it. Creams, pills, nips, tucks. Uh, you watch TV, it's just all about trying to defy this, these seasons, the rhythms of, of time, if you will. Amen? But these seasons are a gift if we understand it the way God wants us to. And there's a time for everything. And the seasons remind us that we aren't in control, that we need to have trust in something greater than us, greater than the moment, greater than where we find ourselves at any given time. The seasons change. Our lives change, but they're a constant reminder that we need to trust in something greater, that we need to trust in God, that we don't have control no matter how much we try to convince ourselves that we can control life and control everything about it. The truth is God knows, and all he's asking for is us to trust him in whatever season we find ourselves in. When the leaves turn, we know the season is changing, right? Well, that's great for the natural. The problem is 
most of the time in our lives, we can't see things clearly. We can't see the changes because we just wake up one day and we're in a change. We're in a different season and we didn't know what happened to the last one. We were there and now we're gone, right? But look at this in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, <clears throat> verse 11 through 13. Three, eleven through 13. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also he hath set the world in their hearts so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. I know that there is no good in them but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. Amen? So I, I'm saying what the Lord is saying to me tonight, and that is don't rush from a perceived bad season to the, what we think is going to be the good season, or from the good season to the next season, hoping that it's going to be better. We all need to slow down. Live in the moment. Be where you are right now. Don't be off thinking, living in some future place when you have this moment to live in, right? Don't be trying to rewind the clock and go back and change something that happened 10 years ago or five years ago or three hours ago. It's gone. Live in this moment. That's what God's trying to get us to understand. See, his grace will always be sufficient for the moment. We don't need, I don't need grace for something that's coming five years down the road. Not yet. When I get there, I'll be in that season. The grace will be there for it. Likewise, grace isn't going to change anything that's in my past in terms of making me feel better about it or, or wishing I were back there. God's grace is sufficient for this moment. This can be the beautiful moment. This can be the time. This can be the season that's the greatest season of our lives. Wherever we are, each season we should approach it from that perspective because God is sufficient for whatever condition we find ourselves in, whatever season we find ourselves in. He is more than enough. Whether it's a season of, of uh, instability, insecurity, whether it's a season of... Uh, infirmity or a season of, uh, you know, excess health or something, you know. I mean, it doesn't matter. God is sufficient for that time, for this moment, for the now moment. And we need to be trusting in him in this moment. Amen? We, we need to just slow down and live now. Live in this moment. Praise the Lord. Be where you are right now. God makes everything beautiful in its time. No matter what it is, He can make it beautiful in the time, in that time. Even the seasons that seem to be the darkest. God can show up and be beautiful in that moment. He can do, some, he can do things that we never dreamed of or expected or imagined. So I'm saying, as same as Suzanne said, rest in His, in his finished work. Rest in his acceptance. Rest in his love. Rest in his grace. Trust him. Amen? If you're in covenant with God, if you're in relationship with God, everything will work out in the end. And if it's not working out, it's not the end. Praise the Lord. God has said yes to us. Mm -hmm. He just wants us to say yes to him. Yes, he has said yes and amen to every promise for you. And he just wants us to say, thank you, Lord. May I have another. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes, Lord. Just say yes to him. Live in the moment. Let's, just, let's, let's grow up as Christians and live in the season that we are in because this time is beautiful in itself in its own time. Amen? Amen. God bless you. you Leave in his power and anointing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.